What's up, everyone? This is David, a.k.a. Reverse Long. And today I got Kurt Workert Jr. back on the podcast. He was he was on the podcast maybe before uh, November, I think it was. Well, anyway, a few months ago. And he is the chief Bitcoin historian at CoinGeek.com. So he yes, knows sir. all about the all about the cryptos and Bitcoin and all this interesting stuff. Last time we actually we spoke about um, Satoshi Nakamoto. He was he was like a the identity got revealed, you know, the and, and all the court case documents. All anyway, that that's a really good podcast. You check it out. Um, but anyway, so I'm interested in knowing more about the metaverse. So my background is in architecture, and I, I'm oh, I'm very interested in how architecture is going to play a role in the metaverse. Now you got like metaverse real estate and all this stuff popping up. And what's interesting, and in the in, uh, next few episodes or next next few episodes coming up, I'm going to be interviewing some architects that actually are designing stuff in the metaverse. And so I'm very interested in that. And I, I was thinking, wait a second, I know the chief Bitcoin historian at CoinGeek over here. He probably <laughs> knows some stuff about the metaverse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, and he, so I, I reached out to Kurt back again and he's like, yeah, I, I know all, I know I'm, a, I'm knowledgeable about the metaverse. So I was like, okay, let's engage in a conversation about it over the, in the podcast. So here we are. So yeah, Kurt, so how's it going, man? I'm good. It's uh, been the, the warmest winter of my life. I, I moved from uh, Chicago last year. And so this is the first year I haven't spent uh, three months of my life shoveling snow. And uh, in, I'm in enjoying Florida. it, man. Yeah, yeah, I, dude, Florida. Florida, Florida is heaven. I'm very happy to be here. Awesome. Um, okay, cool. So so uh, what have you been up to lately? So so just so the same Bitcoin stuff? Yeah, I mean, I'm 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 going around the world speaking. I was on Fox Business Channel yesterday on the uh, the claiming countdown, talking about uh, oh, whether or not. Um, I, well, I do think that XRP is a security, but I also think that Ethereum is 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 likely a security. And talked a little bit about um, the the potential for a Bitcoin ETF and and SEC policy a little bit in general. Um, so that was that was my yesterday. Uh, but normally, you know, I, I, I write an article or two a week. I, I do my own live stream on Tuesdays, the CoinGeek weekly live stream. And uh, I guest on a lot of podcasts and tell tell Bitcoin stories. So that's kind of my uh, my, my day to day. And then uh, actually, I'm repping Alliance Jiu Jitsu today, too. So I'm a I'm a Jiu Jitsu guy. Anytime I got free time, I'm on the mats. So yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, you Jiu Jitsu. I saw some photos of you doing that. I was like, wow, yeah. man, this guy's <laughs> awesome. Got to keep myself sane somehow, and beating people up is a good way to do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> awesome. Um, okay, cool. So let's 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 dive right into it. So um, the metaverse. So maybe a background for anyone as newbie with it. Sure. So conceptually, I mean, the metaverse has existed as a concept for. 25 or 30 years like th these are things that people have theorized it's even a lot you know like what the matrix and stuff like they are talking about existing in a metaverse uh, you could even go back to novels by philip k dick uh who, who basically wrote every sci-fi story you ever heard but they get titled different things and sold to us as like total recall or, or some of the other stuff that uh you know we see sci-fi movies but um, in, in the modern world, a, a metaverse is, is basically a digital world where you get to interact and you may or may not know you're participating in the digital world. But uh, for all intents and purposes at scale, it should be like, hey, man, I spend all my time in the metaverse. I may run my my main business in the metaverse or, or that kind of thing. And so it's kind of this notion that like you merge what's interesting about the internet and what's interesting about your real life and say, you know what, I already spend a lot of my life on social media or, or you know, doing the things that we do. Why not just completely jack in? And I, you know, I live, I live in this digital world where I don't have my physical aches and pains and all this other stuff. Maybe I have a successful business there and drive a Lambo, but in, in my real life, I drive a, you know, a Toyota and, and I'm 30 pounds overweight or whatever. But, um, this is this is something that's been coming for many many years it's something that's been theorized a long time but uh facebook corporation just changed their name to meta uh they're they're pursuing this heavily and um the, you know one of the blockchain projects that i'm most excited about 2018 was announced we're going to launch the metanet which is an internet layer that runs in bitcoin transactions and so that everything can be monetized and property can be owned but even a little bit earlier, if you look at like 2016 and 17, there were things like Decentraland running in Ethereum, where you can tokenize digital land and people are doing that. 
Uh, and you can go back even further. Uh, a company called De Morgan uh, out of Australia had the Cloudcroft platform, which was supposed to be uh, basically the, the beginnings of a, of a metaverse. So there's there's been a lot of technology companies for the last really decade or so that have been quietly working on this idea. Uh, and I, I think we're finally starting to see you know, the stuff become mainstream. People are talking about it. Uh, you know, Mark Zuckerberg talking about um, being in the metaverse and showing uh, stuff, which, you know, I really, really, really hope to God that Mark Zuckerberg is not in control of the metaverse going forward. So it's really important that we get this right and provide valuable alternatives. Yeah, you know, um, Zuckerberg, he was trying to get his hands on like Libra before. So he he's on top of these things. Or at least he tries to be on top of these things before yep. it gets really mainstream and control it. But then he kind of st- backed off from Libra. Um, yep. And maybe, hopefully, he does the same with the metaverse. I, I don't know. But um, I, I, here's hoping, man. If, if Mark Zuckerberg's in control, we're in big trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so so the, the metaverse. All right. So how, how do you quantify, like, the amount of land and stuff in the metaverse? Okay, so you got real estate there, you decentralized, but, like, it's just, like, infinite amounts can just be created? Or is it, like, Bitcoin? There's like a, so, uh, a certain amount. This is this is why it's important. Um, in the Facebook metaverse, my guess is that Facebook Corporation becomes the issuer of digital land. It's sort of like you build a world. Imagine you're God <laughs> and you build yeah. a planet or a solar system or a universe as big as you want it to be. Maybe it expands over time, that kind of thing. Like this is this is like the protocol programming of a of a new existence. Well. If Facebook is in charge of that, then who's to say they're not inflating the land, like creating more land that you aren't aware of? Maybe it's more valuable land that they're creating while you're speculating over less valuable land. Like that that's the kind of thing that is just like terrifying to me. But with blockchain technology, if if you use a, a ledger that is publicly auditable and land is issued as a token on the blockchain, then you can you can verify the size of your metaverse. You can verify who owns what, how much of it, when did they buy it, uh, what was its value at time of purchase, and, and all of that kind of thing. That, that's why it's really important to have this kind of thing be uh, public. It's, it's just like, you know, speculating on on the world when, you know, let, let's say you lived in Boston in the 1700s and say, you know what, I'm going to see if there's a California. And, uh, you know, you show up and it's like, hmm, there are people living here. Like, I, I wasn't expecting that. And then it's a little bit of like this power struggle thing again. And, and frankly, um, we we need it managed in a way that is publicly attestable, that's truly competitive, and uh, and I, I really think that the blockchain technology is the only way to do this in a way that's not uh, gameable. Because if you just let a, a you know a consortium of of corporations decide what the metaverse is, like man, that's that's uh that's some cyberpunk uh, you know dystopia nightmare stuff there. Yeah, you know, it's crazy. So a lot of this stuff in the, in the movies or, the, you know, the future is back in the sci-fi is starting to become reality. It, it's insane. And um, crypto. So basically crypto, blockchain, all this stuff all ties in together. NFTs, it, it all it's all going to work together like seamlessly. That's the plan. Yeah, I mean, an NFT. Right now, people are using it for primarily trading JPEGs. Like, hey, this is my unique ape JPEG. But it's like, well, this could be your unique piece of land. Like each plot can be an NFT and you just trade them like that. So there is uh, absolutely an opportunity there. Yeah, you know, I was listening to the Robert Kiyosaki podcast and he was mentioning how he had someone on uh, about how like all the real estate transactions instead of needing all these auditors and all this kind of paperwork, whatever, you're just mm-hmm. going to have the NFT. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You can just define the logic and it kind of works on cruise control. You, you get rid of a lot of the, uh, the, the friction there with third party auditors and notaries and everybody else. Like the, the blockchain yeah. is that. Wow. And then like you have NFTs can also be like a 3d kind of object. Like I've saw, I've seen like, uh nft racehorses or or you have the the have you i don't know if you've heard about this i don't know about the racehorses no so so yeah the racehorse you know so like you know in, in real life that you have the racehorses you breed them like i don't know like one racehorse with another racehorse and that sure you know whatever 
This yeah, one, yeah, you, yeah. you breed the NFT racehorses and the NFT racehorses, they have like the blockchain or like certain DNA or whatever. And yep. now they produce and like you, and then you race them. So it's like, a, <laughs> it's like a moving thing. Like, a, like, a, no, that's, that's cool. You know, well, so, that's, that's the kind of thing. Um, I, I have a friend that's making a project called Molly match and they're basically doing the same thing with cats. Like they like cats. And so it's like, if I have an orange cat and you have a black cat and I want to try to make a calico, it's like, well, we can breed them. And in an NFT thing? You're like a... It's an NFT. Yeah. 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 Oh, they're yeah. NFT cats and, and they're doing exactly that. So. Well, that makes sense. You have like the cool cats, NFTs and like, right. now you, have the, you can breed them and wow. So <laughs> yeah, multiply. So when I was watching the matrix recently, you know, I, I rewatched it and you have like Keanu Reeves in there. And one of the earlier ones, I think it was number one, the first one. He like uploads Kung Fu to himself and like, you yep. know, he's doing all this stuff. So like, this is, this is like kind of, so like in, in, in the, in the metaverse, someone can be like detached from their actual reality. And what happens when like, they like that reality more than the real reality, you know, it's like, I think that's what like Blade Runner. Um, was yeah. Like. Yeah. Blade um, Runner or, or Total Recall. Total Recall is, is a really good example of not being sure if you're in reality or in a, in a metaverse also. And like, you know, Blade Runner and, and some of these other movies are, are terrifying. Like they're, they're warnings about the stuff being managed by bad corporations or, or overreaching governments and like corruption at every level. And it's, it's a, it's a real danger. Uh, I mean, same with the matrix. The matrix is exactly that. Like, Hey, here's this, here's this heavenly place you get to stay in and, you know, work your nine to five job or whatever, but we're actually harvesting you for, for your, uh, heat. Like we're making power out of you and like, you know, stuff like that is, um, I don't know. It's, it's scary, but it's at the same time, like, you know, I think about my grandparents and stuff, like there's always been the, like, ah, when I was a kid, we used to play with sticks and we liked it, you know? And then our parents, you know, got to be, uh, you know, a little, little more indoors than us. And now, you know, for us, it's like kids just like live on the computer. They just play video games all day. And I, I say the same thing about my kid, you know, like I look at my, my little boy who's, who's going to be three this year. And I'm like, man, like his, his whole life could be sterile. Like he doesn't, he doesn't even need to go outside. I, I imagine what it's going to be like when he's 20. Like he may go to work digitally, digitally, you know, I, yeah, I yeah. work mostly from my desk, but I mean, imagine he hops into a, a damn pod and plugs in and you know, goes and does some metaverse career you know it's the stuff is like yeah it's terrifying but it, at the same time it's like man i don't know like this is every generation is different than every other one like i don't i don't necessarily want to be like hunting woolly mammoth with sharpened sticks either you know yeah yeah you know it, at first it sounds it's man is it, when i first heard about all this it sounds super far-fetched i used to tutor kids in like um in middle school and and like sixth grade whatever and Mm -hmm. they would be hooked on a uh, Fortnite, and like the parents would tell me oh man this kid like can't get them to do sports or anything because I, I i was like man you gotta go outside <laughs> you gotta yeah. go outside or something but like mm -hmm. and and i guess if the kid doesn't know any better you're brought up in that kind of reality that's all you know and you you get yeah. like addicted to it it's it's made so you get addicted so yeah. I don't know, but then I, I've heard a lot of good arguments too, you know, so I really haven't formed a hundred percent opinion on it because as an architect background, like I, I'm excited about the possibilities of, of like design in it, but at the same time, it's like, okay, so there is opportunity. Like if you're, if you live in a third world country, you put on this mm -hmm. Oculus or you go in this pod or whatever, and now you can escape reality, you know? So, yep. you know, but then like, I don't know. So where, where the balance comes in, you, you know, it's just, it's like really one extreme to another. I don't know. Sure. You know, well, that's, that's something I've said about Bitcoin. You know, I've been a Bitcoiner for 10 years now and I, I've been saying exactly that. Like, you know, for, for someone like me, it's like, I don't know, like I, I have credit cards and PayPal and, you know, my, my, my life is basically good. You know, I'm, I'm upper middle class and, and all of that. But like, if I think about the people that are stuck in, you know, Central America, South America, you know, maybe don't have access to, to internet regularly. Or then you look at places like Africa where it's like, man, these people don't even have access to water on a regular basis. And, you know, some of this stuff just gets really, really crazy. And like those people, like Bitcoin could be changing their lives. It could be their first connection to the global economy. And then, you know, th think about, think about how many people in the world 
would be world class entrepreneurs, but they're you know live in a hut instead yeah. because it's just where they were born, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you know, so I, I we also need to be careful not to just think about like, wow, I don't want my boy to be a you know to be a casino owner in the metaverse, but at the same time, like there are there are potentially billions of people who would who would say, man, I really hope my kids get the opportunity to run a business in the metaverse someday, and so. It's 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 a difficult one. It's it, culture culture is changing rapidly, and the technology is in a weird spot with all of it. Yeah, you know, um, well, going back to the movies and the novels and all that of Philip Dick and all this stuff and the Matrix, I guess you gotta. They've been right about a lot of things so far. Maybe you gotta. Yep. That's gonna be the future. I mean, the answer is right there. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> The answer is right there. But okay, so I want to get your thoughts running through a few things. Um, what are your thoughts on Decentraland in, in general? Um, so I think Decentraland is actually a brilliant idea. I, I like it. I, I thought Decentraland was really cool in 2017. I bought some mana tokens and all of that. But as, as I've gotten deeper into like blockchain scalability and things, like my, my opinion on Ethereum, which is the underlying protocol that Decentraland is built upon, Ethereum doesn't scale. And so my concern is that people assume that their assets and stuff are on the blockchain. Now in, in Decentraland, I, they are. Like the, the hash NFT of your land is on Ethereum, but like the problem with a lot of NFTs is that your, your, digital file the thing that you think you own the thing that you observe so like your your horse or your cat or whatever may or may not actually be on the blockchain you have a digital attestation that it exists but the the thing itself the thing that you enjoy like if it's a piece of art it's the art that you enjoy right like you don't find it aesthetically pleasing to have a string of numbers that you hang on your wall right yeah, you yeah. actually want to hang the piece of art on your wall and and on something like ethereum that doesn't really exist. So your land isn't really, really there. And so if Ethereum, because the fees are high, is becomes increasingly popular and Decentraland stays on Ethereum, then the fees to acquire Decentraland's land become too high for anybody to participate in unless you're already very wealthy. So then a metaverse built in Decentraland becomes a place where, it, I mean, it turns into like the movie Elysium, which is, is based on another uh, Philip K. Dick novel where like the wealthy basically control the only useful stuff and you have to beg for permission in order to utilize any of it because the fees to use the just the stuff in reality are, are more than you make in a year. And this already exists. Like we have, you know, the, the problem of, uh, you know, credit card access and stuff for, for half the world because they can't afford the fees. And so Decentraland, the idea is great, but the underlying protocol of Ethereum, the way that it's designed, really makes it that the early elites become the only people that can participate in it at all because the, the system doesn't scale. And so it becomes a bottleneck that you have to be able to afford the tolls for. And so then that becomes a real problem for me. Uh, yeah. we, we should have a scalable system where the fees are predictable and low. And so the, the land can be expensive, for example. Like, you know, I don't care if you pay a billion dollars for a valuable piece of land, but we should, like, if somebody wants to spend 30 grand on a piece of land, like it shouldn't cost them another $10,000 in fees just to acquire it. And so it would be good if it cost a few pennies because the transaction that underlies the purchase of the property, just like anything else, you know, it's like, well, I need to buy a can of Coke if I want to, you know, it's like, okay, well, the can of Coke is a buck and the fee to process the transaction should be less than a penny. I shouldn't need to observe that. And so the, the world, the way that it works now is based on requiring banks and payment processors to aggregate payments. And that's, you know, that, that's why a lot of things in the world suck today. And we would really like to make them better uh, with a scalable blockchain system that makes this stuff work. So kind of a, kind of a long answer and maybe a little bit complex, but um, yeah, I, I, I think we really need to reassess the underlying protocols of these things so that we're not stuck with like, ah, shoot, we've already invested so much here. And now we're stuck with this world where, uh, you know, sorry, the, the pores can't really participate. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. So, so it, you mentioned Ethereum. So if it, this is a using Ethereum as an example. So is that like a Vitalik? Is he, is he working on that? Is he? 
I, he he alleges to be. Um, he's he's been saying that Ethereum 2.0 was supposed to come out. I think in 2018. I think it was supposed to be the transition, and uh, we're very very early days in that transition. Uh, but even so, the the scale of Ethereum 2.0 from everything I've seen is still insufficient for for global scale. You know, like this is still just like, hey, we can onboard like another another chunk of the first world and and people that can afford to and. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't like Ethereum. I don't like Ethereum's architecture for very, very fundamental reasons. Um, I think it's largely insecure uh, and it's buggy. So I, I'm not a. I'm not a fan of like the concept that Ethereum uh, solves. And frankly, the the Bitcoin protocol was capable of doing smart contracts and and all of the kind of stuff that makes Ethereum interesting. All that stuff was available in Bitcoin in the first place. It's it's literally just was turned off. Uh, in the BTC stack because they wanted to focus on like just this financial asset. Um, but it's been turned back on. This is a lot what the block size war was about. And BSV, which is my my favorite blockchain, is just an implementation of Bitcoin that hasn't been, uh, hasn't had anything turned off. And uh, we see stuff like, um, you know, NFTs. And so we, we mint about 5 million NFTs a day on chain and they cost like a thousandth of a penny to transact and everything else. So like, scale scale matters and we really should have all been doing this on bitcoin but now we've got fifteen thousand blockchains instead that are all competing for weird niche markets and not an efficient economy that way yeah so bsv is one potential solution to that to that is what you're saying it's in in my opinion is is the best is from everything i've seen it is the one that can scale today so if if you needed to build a roadmap that is five years long to get everybody on it, you couldn't start with Ethereum because it needs to be built, rebuilt from the ground up. So if you needed to have 5 billion people using a blockchain over the next five years, and you needed to start building that now, uh, the only place to start is on BSV or else you're, you're just, you're gonna need to restart when you reach capacity on whatever other network you decide to choose. I see, and you're saying like the word is not, catching on because everybody wants to focus on bitcoin as a financial correct well and, and ethereum and everything else i mean most most people what they're doing on ethereum or, or any of these blockchains even if you look at like the scalable competitors like solana and polygon and avalanche and stuff people are still just basically building lending and trading platforms on them so it's like it's all DeFi. it's all hey lock up your coins we'll give you some interest and this and that they're running a ponzi scheme out the back door and uh, people are making money, but it's, it, you know, that, like these things are, they're interesting, but it's like one little niche of what you can do in, in, with the tools. Like the tools can be everything. You could unlock your car, unlock your house and launch rocket ships and, you know, everything with, with blockchain assets if you do it right. But like people don't seem to think that there's like a valid business application for the technology. And I just, I, di I disagree. And I think it's a huge uh, opportunity cost to not be the person trying to build uh, something that can only be built with uh, with the technology. So, yeah. Um, okay. And now the metaverse real estate. What What are your mm -hmm. thoughts on like a metaverse real estate investments? I heard people talking about like uh, recently they're going to an um, what is it called? Uh, where, where you you buy the real estate? Mm -hmm. oh, man, uh, I forgot the word. But anyway, yeah, they're going to. Uh, especially with an A. <laughs> anyway, yeah, they're, they're gonna they're gonna go to one of these things and buy real estate in the metaverse. What do you? I mean, it's just like anything else. If you choose the right metaverse, if you if you buy real estate today in the metaverse that everybody lives in 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 twenty years, like, I mean, you you're a Rockefeller, right? <laughs> so, uh, but if you invest wrong, I mean, it's it, it's just like in real life. It's land speculation. You know, if you if you buy land and you're like, look. I think there's going to be a lot of people living here in 20 years. So I'm Let's going to see. start to build infrastructure. Um, yeah, maybe you're right and you become the richest person in the world, or maybe you're wrong. And you just waste a bunch of time and money. So um, th this is a lot why I really think we need to get the, the underlying protocol needs to be right. Because like Decentraland's cool. It's, it, it works well and everything, but it works well at this scale. So it's kind of like, Man, I don't know. It's like buying, buying, uh, you know, property in a city that was powerful a thousand years ago, and now it's, you know, you don't even know the name of it because it, it couldn't scale. It got, you know, <laughs> flooded by by some, you know, it's just gone. Like it's, 
or you built it on a fault line, right? And like, uh, yeah, you know that kind of thing. It's it's a uh, Pompeii is a good is a good example. Like, yeah. hey, it's a thriving city. Like, oh shit, that volcano is is really serious. We're all dead, you know, and and that's it. That's it's just over at that point. So uh, people need to be careful with it. But by all means, I, I mean, some, somebody's going to pick the right spot and be like trillion dollar wealthy uh, someday because of it. But I don't think we've seen the, the metaverse that's going to uh, scale up and everyone's going to live in yet, because right now they're all built on places that cannot scale up. I see. And so what do you think in the metaverse is going to look like in the near future? Because like I'm trying to relate like the super near, like three to five years. Are we going to be plugged in? (laughs) I think, I think it's, I think it, no, I I don't think people are going to be like fully plugged in. People are going to play with it. They're going to tinker with it. But um, I I think it's going to be integration with the real world. I I think that's going to be the first thing. Cause like you can only spend so much time doing your digital nonsense. Right. So like, I I really like a project called Omniscape. Uh, What Omniscape does is instead of trying to build a, a completely digital world, what they do is they basically build an overlay world in the real world. So it's a little bit um, like the Pokemon Go aspect of things where it's like, OK, I'm going to do a scavenger hunt, but I'm in a real city like I'm in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and I'm looking for coupons to the local restaurant or the you know arcade or whatever it is I want to go, a movie theater or something. And like if, if I can complete these digital tasks, like find, you know, solve some puzzle out in the park or whatever can go see this next you know star wars movie for free and like so i think people will participate in ways that are like that because it's really the only way that it's sustainable i mean if if we all just plug into a pod in the morning or 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 maybe never unplug from the pod like we die too young we get sick like you you gotta use your body you know yeah so i think some of that stuff is um you know it's novel it's it's interesting but but you know we we are designed to function in the real world like we we already have like global weight problems and cholesterol problems and you know heart disease and cancer on the rise like for for a generation now and so uh you know like living in the metaverse without physically using your body is it's just going to exacerbate that stuff but there will certainly be applications where that makes sense like i said if you know if if there's a digital there's a digital reality that you can live in and make good money. Maybe that's what you do for your career. Like maybe you literally run a chain of like restaurants or hotels or movie theaters or casinos or whatever it is in the metaverse. And that's your job. And then you unplug at night and go live with your family in the real world. And you don't have a job that isn't in the metaverse. So um, it's, it's hard to say there's a lot of theory and a lot of opinion going on and it's, you know, the cool thing is the economy will figure it out. Like all of a sudden we'll look back and say, oh man, and that changed quickly. But uh, it's it's hard to say what it'll look like in five years outside of if we don't make the the healthy physical decisions, like the people that pioneer it are just going to die young. <laughs> Maybe we get yeah. to redo the idea. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, okay, so like when I'm thinking of the metaverse, I'm thinking like a, one example someone told me was like, okay, it's like going to the DMV. Nobody wants to go there, and like you have to wait in line, all that. But what happens if you can put on a, the metaverse helmet or whatever the Oculus and just go into DMV virtually and, and verify everything through blockchain? You no, know, I, so I I like that. I mean, there's there's no reason not to do that. Like that's that's great. I I think there are a lot of things that could work really well. I mean, imagine if like your your doctor could be something like that so rather than having to commute like we we have a a portion of our house that is set up to like you just connect to it and it checks all your vitals and and all your stuff you know like analyzes analyzes your basic stuff and you're communicating with the doctor as if you're one-on-one but as soon as you're done it's that's just it you just unplug and and move on like that's that's a that's a great application right there uh you know the commute and and everything else is is frankly a waste of time so i i certainly think there's commercial application like that where it makes sense um and it allows you to you know rather than you know hey i I don't live anywhere near the mayo clinic but maybe i've got a weird disease but i want to live a thousand miles away from the hospital that's good at that disease like maybe that becomes an option because of of metaverse technology 
So the metaverse thing, once you're plugged in, it's like you are in the metaverse and the doctor can, the metaverse doctor can diagnose you from that, from like your body mm -hmm. in the metaverse. Incredible. Um, yeah, we're kind of doing that now, don't you think? I mean, I've, I've, I've had a doctor, <laughs> I've had a doctor's appointment uh, the past year on, on FaceTime, you know, <laughs> once. Well, there you go. You yeah. know what I mean? We're kind of doing that now, you know, so. Yeah. Look at the way we're, we're talking right now through Zoom. Yeah, no, so. for sure. Well, there's a the thing. It's going to be slow. I, I heard, a, I can't remember what podcast it was, but they were talking about whether or not you need to chip people. Everyone's been taught for, you know, 30 years. Like, ah, they're going to put chips under your skin. It's like, they don't need to. I never leave home without my phone. I was about to mention that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, it's connected. I, you know, I, I, I keep a, like, this thing I, is a, a vital track. There you go. Yeah. So it's like. Thing. You know, it's telling me your heart rate. I wake up in the morning and check, like, oh, how much REM sleep did I get and all the other stuff, you know? And it's like, so it is. We're, we're already, like, very slowly uh, getting involved in, in exactly that, you know, to where it's like the computer is is part of my my whole process. Like, it is monitoring my sleep at all times and that kind of thing or, or whatever. If I go for a jog, it tells me, like, oh, Kurt, you burned you burned less calories than last time. and you know, like, let, let's calibrate up. Maybe, maybe you need to change your diet or whatever else, you know? So it is, it's, uh, it's, it's slow. It's not like one day we're just going to be like, okay, well, you know, hop in the pod and click. Like, it's just not like that. So we'll just slowly adopt things until all of a sudden it's like, oof. You, you know, so recently, um, one thought just popped in my head. So recently I looked on Instagram and there's, uh, there was like a, on the Wall Street Bets page, they post funny stuff and so they posted, you might've seen it. They posted like uh, these four guys that crashed the wedding in the metaverse, like a clip, and then like <laughs> they smashed a champagne bottle on the guy's head, oh, and funny. like they I throw, did not see this, they, but this sounds great. <laughs> yeah, he gets the he gets the the cell phone of of the of the groom or the bride and throws it like over the <laughs> over the balcony or whatever they're celebrating on a sure. high rise, and it's just like hit chaos. So like yeah. you can't get like arrested in the metaverse. Like what happens? There? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean. I mean, and, and that's the thing, you know, it's like, now it's the, well, we're going to need police or we're going to need, you know, now we have politicians and we got people that enforce different laws in the metaverse. And like, it's just it, like people, you can't change human nature. And I think that's what so many people are like, wow, new, new tools allow new behavior. And it's like, man, people were the same 10,000 years ago. They just didn't have iPhones. Like it's yeah, not different. Like some people human are nature. violent. Some people are nice. Some people are religious. Some people are egomaniacs. Like some people are warriors and some people are, are cooks, you know? And it's like, that's just, that's just it. Like that reality isn't different. Like we live in different places and have different tools, but humans are funny. You know, I, I, I saw a thing recently. They, they pulled some, it, I don't know how old it was. I want to say it was something like five or 6,000 years old, pulled out of a bog in, in Russia, what's now Russia. And it's like, it's in a it's in a proto language that they weren't really even sure how to translate initially, but it explains it's it's a kid. It's homework, but in the homework, he's doodling on his homework and instead of writing out the stuff he inserted, he wrote a little story and it's himself fighting monsters with a sword, you know, and it's like, this is this is every kid forever, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah. they have some fantasy about like, man, I'm going to be really big and tough when I'm an adult and they fantasize about all this stuff and it's like. We don't know anything else about him. The kid might have been a warrior. He might have he might have died when he was ten, or or he might have you know just been a farmer or whatever. And like that's just that's what life is like. And you can't you can't change it that much. And so uh, the metaverse is going to have a culture that looks a lot like our current culture, in my opinion. Yeah, um, interesting, and and I agree. So, okay, so what are your thoughts also? I want to get your thoughts. So I heard someone mention over here in Puerto Rico, you got all this crypto people here. Someone mentioned that they're going to get, a, they bought a, or they, they filed a patent for like shaking hands in the metaverse to be like, to conclude a deal. Interesting. You know, so that's like, I mean, that's like a digital signature or something like that. Could be. Yeah. I mean, so sometimes they call like in, in digital, like when you make a, a, a network connection, uh, or an authorization, they will call it a handshake. So this is like when um, it can be something as simple as like when you plug in a smart speaker into your your home theater system, they handshake and that's yeah. you know, authorize. 
So it could be something like that. Um, but I mean, yeah, like these, these kinds of things need to be defined in the protocol that, that is utilized. So it would be good if on top of other things, so assuming like you have different architects of different systems, but they can handshake and, and share data with each other, like that could be something that you patent, but that's some of that stuff is going to be over my head. Like patent, patent law is already complicated, especially when it comes to like, you know, connecting different protocols and who regulates protocols. Like that stuff is like, yeah. So, <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of new, new, uh, I guess loopholes or, or just inefficiencies that oh, yeah. you can take it, you know? So like, I guess, uh, patents is one real estate is one early on, you know, cause like mm -hmm. it's, it's a, it's very new still. So it has, I don't think, is there a matter so besides the central land or like how many metaverses are there currently? It really depends how you define it. Um, there's, there's a few major ones. Um, but like, you know, the Facebook metaverse right now, like we don't even know what it's going to be called, but they're allegedly working on it. Um, you could even say that something like, uh, I don't know. If you look at something like Crypto Fights, for example, is, is a game that runs in BSV and it's a turn-based game. It's basically a dice roll and then, you know, ogres and elves like fight it out and whoever wins gets tokens and all of that kind of stuff. But you're acquiring actual items that have value so it's kind of like i always say like babe's root babe ruth's bat for example is like it's a more valuable bat because babe ruth swung it yeah and it's the it's the same thing in in the, the metaverse so imagine i have a battle axe and i'm some champion in crypto fights like <clears throat> at some point that battle axe might be something i put in my will to give to my children you know so it's like is is that a metaverse like no it's a game but it's like well but so is playing in Decentraland, kind of, you know, I'm not physically there. I'm interacting with the same kind of thing. I'm just interacting with a token protocol that, that tells a network that I'm the one that owns the token. And, and that's, you know, so it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a definitions thing. It's, it's the same thing. Like, how, how do you define all kinds of stuff? <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. we, we're even in a, in a society now where people aren't sure how to define, like, the difference between a man and a woman. And it's like, well... There's a simple definition, <laughs> but you can complicate the hell out of it if you want. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, absolutely. Um, okay, and then to wrap, start to wrap it up. So, when do you think that the hardware is going to be advanced enough to like intuitively interact within the metaverse? Because right now, all I can think of is like the Oculus. Sure, I think. I mean, I, I actually think we we have a lot of the tools necessary to do it now. Right? I think Oculus and some of the. I know there's like two or three other serious competitors in the space, like. They work really well. Like I've, I've done some VR gaming and it's like so immersive that like, really? oh yeah. I mean, like if you're playing, if you're playing a game that has like uh, motion and, and like scare tactics to it, like a roller coaster, I've, I've done a virtual reality roller coaster thing, like in a, in an Oculus kind of, and it's, it's terrifying. I don't like roller coasters and I'm not actually moving it or I'm sitting on the damn couch, but we get to the, you know, click, click, click and, and arch over the thing. And I'm feeling like, it. Yeah, I yeah. feel my panic starting to come up, you know? Wow. So like, that's, that's some of it that's already there. And, and then, um, you know, these, the new Macintosh M1 chips and stuff that they come in the new Apple computers and stuff like these things are very, very powerful and they can render, they can render all kinds of stuff very quickly. So uh, I was just at CES in Las Vegas. It's the consumer electronics show. There were so many things. There was, uh, you know, gloves with haptic feedback. So there's like, I don't even know, thousands of sensors on the glove. So it's, it can do like, rather than just your very simple motions, it's, you know, one, two, three, four, and like all the little wiggles your fingers can do, because it's that kind of thing that allows you to really articulate and interact with stuff in the digital space. But then there was one that was like a, a body suit and they had a football player and, uh, People are wearing the bodysuit and like they'd shoot you and you would feel it. It would it would hit you, but you'd feel it explode out your back too. So it'd be like a, a small ping oh in God. the front and a big boom out the back. And just the way that it uses motion and, and vibration and everything, it's like, oh my gosh, is that what it feels like to get shot? You know, and like um we watched a football player, uh, you know, people are playing a little bit and they're on like a a weird multi-directional treadmill thing and so they're they're playing football and this and that and, and a dude gets tackled really hard and he gets blasted off his feet because the way that the vest boom like hit him in the side and he was like 
holy cow, that hurt. Like, yeah, it's football. You just got tackled by a 300 pound linebacker, you know? Wait, but like, when you were staring at it, there was no linebacker. This no, is- there's no linebacker. Like they're playing a game. And so, but the game is programmed to do these things. Like you had, you had to take your shirt off and connect electrical sensors to your body. And then the vest went over it to seal it all in. And it was just like, okay, so I can play in the NFL and see what it's like to get tackled by like a literal NFL football player. And so incredible. Incredible. You know, so th- so this stuff, I mean, it's the, the prototypes are there. I was I was playing with them. So yeah, we've got uh, not a lot of time, frankly. But I mean, you can time. go buy an Oculus right now, and it, they're yeah. they're very very immersive. You get motion sickness from them and everything. Wow. Okay. Awesome. I got to check that out. So okay. So to to finish up, you mentioned some movies and some books. Maybe uh, I know I'm interested. I, I got some homework to do. Sure. Um, yeah. Any, 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 any recommendations? Yeah. I mean, the, the basis of a lot of this stuff is, is Philip K. Dick. So he, uh, he wrote the stories that influenced literally Total Recall, uh, The Matrix, um, b- bits and pieces of, of all kinds of things. Blade Runner is another good one. Um, and there's a lot of things on uh, even the show The Outer Limits, which was when I was much younger, there was an original Outer Limits. I think they may still do one on one of the weird cable channels now. But, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Or Black Mirror. If, if you have Netflix, Black Mirror is like a big warning <laughs> about about technology and, and where it's going. It's I believe it's a British uh, produced show, but it's really, really good. So if you really want to get freaked out quickly, Black Mirror is a good place to start. It's a very addictive series. Cool. I'm going to check that out. Well... Thanks, Kurt, for coming on, man. That was a lot of good stuff. Fun yeah, topic. Sure. The metaverse is such a fun topic, you know? It so is. Speculating about the future and all this crazy stuff. Insane. Yep. Well, but yeah, Kurt, good to see you, man. Absolutely. Likewise. Well, you have a great rest of your day, and we'll catch up soon. Thanks a lot. Cool, man. Bye-bye.